Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Tuesday, September 6th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So first off, I hope everyone had an enjoyable Labor Day holiday. We've got a couple things to talk about, first with some updated COVID-19 information, and then finally the approval of the first drug to treat acid sphingomyelinase disease. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you get the drugs that interest you. So first up, you remember those submitted applications for the new bivalent COVID booster shots we talked about last week? Well, this week, the FDA amended the emergency use authorizations for the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine to authorize these bivalent formulations of the vaccines for use as a single booster dose at least two months following primary or booster vaccination. The bivalent vaccines, which I'll refer to as updated boosters, contain two messenger RNA components of SARS-CoV-2 virus, one of the original strain of the SARS-CoV-2, and the other one in common between the BA4 and BA5 lineages of the Omicron subvariant of SARS-CoV-2. The Moderna COVID-19 vaccine, bivalent, is authorized for use as a single booster dose in individuals 18 years of age and older. The Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine bivalent is authorized for use as a single booster dose in individuals 12 years of age and older. The monovalent COVID-19 vaccines that are authorized or approved by the FDA and have been administered to millions of people in the U.S. since December of 2020 contain a component of the original strain of SARS-CoV-2. The BA4 and BA5 lineages of the Omicron variant are currently causing most cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. and are predicted to circulate this fall and winter. In June, the agency's Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee voted overwhelmingly to include an Omicron component in COVID-19 booster vaccines. For each bivalent COVID-19 vaccine, the FDA based its decision on the totality of available evidence, including extensive safety and effectiveness data for each of the monovalent mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, safety and immunogenicity data obtained from a clinical study of a bivalent COVID-19 vaccine that contained mRNA from Omicron variant BA1 that is similar to each of the vaccines being authorized and also non-clinical data obtained using a bivalent COVID-19 vaccine that contained mRNA of the original strain and mRNA in common between the BA4 and BA5 lineages of the Omicron variant. Based on the data supporting each of these authorizations, the bivalent COVID-19 vaccines are expected to provide increased protection against the currently circulating Omicron variant. Individuals who receive a bivalent COVID-19 vaccine may experience side effects commonly reported by individuals who receive authorized or approved monovalent mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. With this authorization, the monovalent mRNA COVID-19 vaccines are not authorized as booster doses for individuals 12 years of age and older for the Pfizer product and 18 years of age and older for the Moderna product. The monovalent vaccines continue to be authorized for use for administration of a primary series for individuals six months of age and older, as described in the letters of authorization. 
As of this time, the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine remains authorized for administration of a single booster dose for individuals 5 through 11 years of age at least five months after completing a primary series of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. Both of the updated boosters were reviewed by the CDC and should be available at local pharmacies for administration right now. And finally this week, the FDA also approved Olipidase Alpha, which goes by brand name Zenpozyme, for IV infusion in pediatric and adult patients with acid sphingomyelinase disease, which goes by acronym ASMD. This is a rare genetic disease that causes premature death. Zempazyme is the first approved medication to treat symptoms that are not related to the central nervous system in patients with ASMD. ASMD is caused by the lack of an enzyme needed to break down a complex lipid called sphingomyelin that accumulates in the liver, spleen, lung, and brain. Patients with ASMD have enlarged abdomens that can cause pain, vomiting, feeding difficulties, and falls. They also have abnormal liver and blood tests. The most severely affected patients have profound neurological symptoms and rarely survive beyond two to three years of age. Other patients may survive into adulthood but die prematurely from respiratory failure. Zenpozyme is an enzyme replacement therapy that helps reduce sphingomyelin accumulation in the liver, spleen, and lung. The efficacy of Zenpazyme for the treatment of ASMD was demonstrated in a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study of 31 patients randomized to take Zenpazyme or placebo. Because the study had the placebo comparator and measured treatment benefits that could be detected during the study's duration, the FDA was able to conclude that Zenpazyme was effective. Overall, treatment with Zenpazyme improved lung function and reduced liver and spleen size. The most common side effects of Zenpazyme include headache, cough, fever, joint pain, diarrhea, and low blood pressure. Zenpazyme carries a boxed warning for severe hypersensitivity reactions, including anaphylaxis. Some patients treated with Zempozyme developed lab abnormalities such as abnormal liver blood tests. Routine blood lab testing should be obtained periodically. Zempozyme should not be started during pregnancy due to potential for fetal harm, which was observed during animal studies. Additionally, in the clinical trials, 75% of pediatric patients and 50% of adult patients experienced reactions including headache, nausea, and vomiting while receiving Zenpazyme through IV infusion. Zenpazyme received fast-track, breakthrough therapy, and priority review designations. It also received orphan drug designation, which provides incentives to assist and encourage the development of drugs for rare diseases. The FDA awarded the sponsor a rare pediatric disease priority review voucher which is an incentive to encourage development of new drugs and biologics that prevent and treat rare disease in children. The FDA granted the approval of Zenpazyme to Genzyme. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.